Hey everybody, John Lorden here. Welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. This episode being recorded for May 2nd, 2018. I received an email from someone who has a brother that has gone missing. Uh, I wanted to get this information posted as quickly as possible. There's not a lot of information that we're going to find via news sources, but thankfully his brother has sent me more details and we are going to go through all of those details. Today we are looking at the case of missing person Jason Kump, and this is out of the Fresno, California area. Uh, we're going to start with a missing poster here hosted at facebook.com forward slash find Jason Kump. This is the official Facebook page for the search for him. Uh, if you're interested in helping in searches, we're going to talk about that a little bit by the end of the video, but this is kind of the rally point for people interested in helping in this case. So be sure to visit facebook.com forward slash find Jason Kump for more info. So we can see from the poster here, I am missing. I left my house near Venice, I believe it's Avenue and Divisadero Street with my bike on Thursday morning, February 15th, 2018, around 6.30 a.m. And then there being more specific, sometime between 5.30 and 7.30 a.m. He left with his bike. Please help find me. Look for my bike. My bike is a navy blue city bike with chrome accessories, red brake cables, and front back racks. My family friends, Fresno police, do not know what clothes I was wearing or what direction I traveled. I do have my silver framed eyeglasses and maybe sunglasses too. Uh, full name is Jason Alexander Kump, male, white, brown eyes, brown hair, stands at five foot nine, weighs somewhere between 130 to 150 pounds. His date of birth, February 10th, 1984. Um, kind of interesting that he's going missing so close to his birthday. And then, of course, you know, this is literally the day after Valentine's Day. Uh, which can be a tough day for some people out there. Um, and does that potentially have something to do, to do with this case? We'll, we'll get some input from his brother on that as well. Um, they are asking for people to review any security camera footage they might have, or if they do remember seeing someone maybe riding a bike like this in the area. Um, and then they have contact information down here. I will have contact information in the description box below as well. So if you have any details, please use that contact info, get it into uh, the authorities so they can act on it and help this family figure out where Jason is. I did want to note, um, this is another post from the Facebook page. It's the same bike, but the racking is different. And I'm not sure which is more accurate for uh, when he actually disappeared. So I did just want to show this picture as well. As you can see on this one, there is just one rack. It is on the front and it has a basket attachment. If we look at the other photo, you can see it's a there is a back flat rack and then a front flat rack. Um, this bar that you see kind of kicking up, this is actually a chair that he is holding on the front of the bike. So that is not part of the racking. It's just a flat one in this picture. But you can see with the um, the way that it's connected to the forks here that this one goes in a V shape and this one goes straight up. So those are two different racking systems. I don't know exactly which one uh, the bike might have on it, but the bike is definitely a big clue in this case um, because we know that it's missing with him. If we jump over to the Fresno Sheriff's Office, we get a little more information. Unfortunately, it's not the best of information, um, but they do also let us know there's a possibility he has traveled to the Table Mountain slash Millerton Lake area on his bike. Uh, this is an area that is approximately 20, 21 miles away from where he lived. If he did ride his bike there, it's likely that uh, it was about a two hour ride. So if maybe you have a commute that crosses uh, any part of the path that he would have taken from Fresno to the Table Mountain Millerton Lake area, uh, rack that that memory of yours. See if there's anything that you can remember about seeing someone on a bike like this that might help us understand what direction he might have gone in. Now they have another missing poster uh, posted down here. Almost the same information, except there is a little twist that we get in here. First of all, uh, that he was actually last seen on Valentine's Day uh, at about 11 at night. 
near Van Ness and Nevada Avenue. And then after that is unfortunately the most disturbing of the information. Subject is possibly suicidal and maybe armed. So we'll get some more details on that um, from his brother as well. In terms of the media on this case, not a whole lot. Uh, pretty much just echoing the same points that we've hit again here at ABC 30. We can see uh, Fresno County deputies are searching for 34-year-old Jason Kump. Uh, they talk about the fact that he was reported missing and that he might have gone to Table Mountain or the Millerton, Millerton Lake area on his bike. Uh, they once again note he was last seen on Valentine's Day near Van Ness and Nevada Avenues. Um, but literally, that's it. And you'll just find um, post after post with different news organizations echoing the same thing. Uh, here, we get a little bit of additional detail. Uh, first of all, on March 2nd, 2018, they talk about the fact that the Facebook group is there and that they were organizing a search in the Fresno area for that following weekend. You can also see that if you visit the, the Facebook page. They did conduct a search. Unfortunately, they didn't find anything. Uh, once again, they're echoing that Kump may be suicidal and armed. The San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office says the department was alerted to his disappearance because Kump is said to have relatives in Napomo. Uh, deputies say they did not find Kump in the area or information indicating otherwise. Um, so we've got a, a lot of people looking for him in a pretty big section of uh, middle to, to northern California. Uh, jumping over to Fox 26, once again, it's just there's no details here, folks. It's the same stuff. It's just talking about Fresno's looking for this guy, possible last sighting, possibly suicidal. Uh, here, at least they give a little bit more about his vital statistics, but literally that's it. FresnoB.com. Uh, we finally get one little nugget of different information. Kump is an engineer for the city of Fresno, according to his brother, Nate Kump. Now, that's not the same brother that contacted me. But with all that being said, let me jump into his message so we can really get some better details about what's going on around this case. The brother that contacted me is Greg. Uh, he initially sent me an email um, just letting me know that his brother disappeared. Uh, he's been missing since February 14th, 2018. He's 34 years old. He worked for the city of Fresno as an engineering plan checker in development services. So we get a little better detail in terms of his work. One thing I'm curious about was, um, was he supposed to work that day? And considering that he works for the city of Fresno, I think it's pretty likely that he was supposed to work that day. Um, now, I understand from the communication with his brother, he also has a car. I don't know if he was the type of person that would ride his bike to work or not. Um, so I don't know how strange it is that he went for this bike ride on a work morning, what's more than likely a work morning. Um, Greg tells me about the Facebook page, which I've already shared with you guys. And they're saying that basically they know he left in the, the morning of February 15th and just has never been seen again. He didn't leave a note. He didn't take his car. He didn't take his driver's license, his wallet, including all his credit cards uh, or his passport. Uh, they are saying that they got the police report filed very quickly the first day that he was uh, noticed missing. And they have asked neighbors, they've searched their cameras, traffic signal cameras, bus cameras, the train station, homeless shelters, uh, encampments. They are doing everything they can to try to figure out where he is or to find some trace of where he has gone. And unfortunately, they're just really striking out. There is There has been no developments in this case whatsoever. Um, so once again, that's why I wanted to get it featured here and ask if you have friends in the Fresno area, please share this video with them. Please raise exposure to this case and in particular to his face here so that they know who they could be looking for. Also keep in mind this bicycle is probably a pretty big key to it as well. So please uh, take a good look at these photos and keep these in mind as we go forward. Um, I asked Greg, are you still looking for searchers in the area? Uh, and if so, is, face, is the Facebook page the best place to refer any potential volunteers to? He says, uh, we are not looking for searchers currently because we have no leads on which direction he went. 
My other brother, Nick, is moving to Fresno, and we will likely start search again in mid to late May. The Facebook page is the best place for potential volunteers to offer help when we start searching again. So if you do want to be someone that helps in this, please follow that Facebook page. Check it in particular around mid to late May and look for more developments in terms of new searches that are happening. Uh, I asked them if they were running any sort of fundraising uh, and to send me links if they were. He says they're not doing fundraising because there are no costs currently. Uh, we had most recently posted a reward for his bike since it was so unique. There were very few of them sold in the Fresno area. So without finding any signs of him, we focused on the only other thing we know he took with him. I asked Greg to tell us a little more about Jason in terms of his hobbies or interests. I was hoping maybe there might be some information in there that could give us some idea of where he could have possibly gone. Um, Jason liked to hike. He liked to backpack, rock climb, both in the gym and outdoors. Uh, Jason is the type of person to help out his friends with exterior household tasks, uh, native landscaping, bike riding, both road and mountain, and especially rock hunting. That's a little bit of an interesting point. Um, I don't know if he had a different bike for his mountain biking, but the bike and especially the tires that I see on this bike, those are straight up street tires. So if it was his intent to go somewhere where he might be kind of getting off, uh, off of roads, I don't know that that's the bike he would necessarily take, but I, I don't have much more detail on that. Um, in terms of siblings, he is one of four. I asked, was he in a relationship when he went missing? He was not in a relationship and he last called it off with his girlfriend in November. He didn't appear to have much grief over stopping the relationship. Uh, do you think there's any significance to him disappearing around Valentine's Day? He did break up with one of his past girlfriends on Valentine's Day, uh, but we couldn't really find a specific connection to it. Are you aware of any personal issues he was struggling with, such as finance, friends, work, etc.? He didn't have any finance, friends, or work issues. Any known enemies? No enemies, only good friends. This was an, a self-act of disappearance. So we can see here, Greg is very convinced. Uh, this is Jason's choice. He decided to disappear. It's just a question of why and where he has gone since. I asked him if he could give us some idea why law enforcement is mentioning a potential suicide with this case. A police background check revealed a gun was purchased in December without anyone's knowledge. I do find that pretty interesting, uh, especially if we're looking at just a bit of a timeline here. Um, he breaks up with a girlfriend in November, December, he buys a gun, um, gets through his birthday, gets to Valentine's Day, and then literally the next morning disappears. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that breakup was a little tougher than people are aware of. Um, I'm really not sure, but in terms of at least the the things that we do know are happening here uh, with his personal life, it is pointing to the possibility that maybe he could have been uh, depressed or upset uh, about what was going on with his personal life. Uh, and then I asked, is is a gun of his missing? You know, why are police saying that he might be armed? And yes, the gun that he purchased uh, was missing when his roommate and the police went looking for it. Now, that's really concerning uh, because we know that he didn't take any personal effects. Now, one thing that Greg didn't mention before, so I asked for some clarification on this, was his cell phone. Is his cell phone missing? Uh, and he said, no, he left his cell phone wallet with ID and credit cards, his logbook and passport. So it's pretty concerning that um, the only things that appear to be missing are the bicycle and this gun that he bought without telling anyone. So I can understand why police are concerned that uh, he might be looking to harm himself. I asked where his house keys with him. Is it possible that he just went out for a bike ride and then something happened to him? Unfortunately, he left his house key. Uh, he didn't take anything to show that he was coming back. I then asked specifically about why might he be headed to Table Mountain or Millerton Lake. 
He liked to hike, run, and rock hunt in both of those areas. The sheriff's department conducted a couple searches in the Millerton Lake and Gorge areas. Obviously, they haven't found anything. I asked, did he have any pets at home? Did it look like he left more food and water than usual for them or anything like that? Unfortunately, he doesn't, so we have no indicators there. And I also asked, other than a potential suicide or a random act of foul play occurring, are there any other theories that you can think fit the situation? And Greg replied, there are no other theories out there, and foul play has never come up as a viable theory in terms of the investigation so far. I asked him about the information from the last sighting. Um, could he give us any more details about the sighting, you know, clothing, direction, anything like that? The last sighting was the evening before he disappeared, which we know would have been around 11 o'clock on Valentine's Day, uh, 11 p.m. Uh, his last known clothing is undetermined, but they did get some information that he was possibly wearing a pair of jeans. Um, and his family, the parents, have the contents of his room at their house, and they do believe that uh, there is a pair of jeans missing from there. So it could be that he is indeed wearing a pair of jeans. Uh, outside of that, that's all the detail that I got from Greg. Um, I don't know, guys, this is a tough one, and it feels like we've had a run lately of cases here uh, where the possibility that someone has harmed themselves is is one that we really have to look into. And it just it's a really tough thing. I mean, look at what these families go through in these cases. Um, I know that it's especially tough if you're in a situation like this where you feel like there is uh, no choice for you than other than to end your life for some reason. Um, I'd like to remind you guys, there is certainly always a choice. Things always change. Even when you're in the pits of despair at the bottom of the barrel, it cannot last forever. That goes for good things too. Things typically always change at some point, um, especially if you want them to change. There's a lot that you can do to affect that. So uh, I'm going to include some information in, in the description box below. Also, for anyone that might be struggling, needs someone to talk to, um, we've covered enough of these cases at this at this point that I think um, I want to make sure to get that type of information back out. If anyone out there is struggling, please reach out. There are help. There are people that want to help you. Uh, and if that can't be your family for some reason, there are strangers certainly out there that want to help you. Uh, I didn't want to shy away from this case. Uh, I do still ask, please, please help this family figure out where Jason is. Please look for this bicycle. This bicycle is probably a very big key to his location. Please share this video with your friends that might live in the Fresno area. I'd really, really appreciate it. Thank you all for being here with me through this. Uh, I know some of these videos are not very easy, but I also know that you guys are a real special audience and I appreciate that you care about these cases like I do. Please come back to the Lord and Arts channel tomorrow for more. I'll be there. Take care.